I hope this reaches you, and I hope I'm still alive by the time it does. I know I didn't update in some time, but there's a good reason for that. That reason being the fact that I am currently in hiding. Let's start from the beginning. A lot of you advised me to stop eating my husband's breakfasts. At this point, I'm going to have to find him a nickname because I am so sick and tired of referring to him as my husband. Can we go with the imposter? Yeah? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so I read your advice and absolutely I thought it was a great idea. What I didn't anticipate was the amount of suspicion it was going to bring upon me. The day after my last post, I woke up in the morning to the smell of bacon, eggs and toast. I will... I closed my eyes and I sighed, bracing myself to what was coming. I got up, put on my slippers and headed for the kitchen where the imposter had made my breakfast, ready as per usual. I gave him my best fake smile and said, Good morning, honey, to which he replied in the same fashion. I looked at the breakfast and said, Oh, I'm not going to be eating t today. I just, I just feel a bit nauseous. He just stared at me. There was a long silence that I decided to break by saying, I'm sorry, babe. He just sat there in silence for what felt like an eternity staring at me. I was about to break the silence again when he sighed deeply and said, Not this shit again. Huh? <laughs> what do you mean? I asked, visibly confused. You found it, didn't you? I, I found what, exactly? I knew damn well what he was talking about, but I did my best to feign ignorance, and apparently it worked because he just stared at me briefly, uncrossed his arms, and said, Well, never mind. I'm still sleepy, don't mind me. He unlocked his wheelchair and I asked him what he was doing. He answered, You're not leaving home without breakfast. I'm preparing you some tea at least. Don't worry, I'll do it, I said, in the hopes that he would leave it at that. I said, he lowered his voice, I will do it. Go get dressed. But I said go. Not sure if it was the fact that he was clearly mad or the fact that I hadn't heard him yell at me for 20 years, but this made me shiver and whimper. I thanked him and went to a way to get dressed, knowing fully well I'd have to drink that tea. At least at this point, it was fairly clear to me that you guys were right. It was also extremely clear I wouldn't be able to skip breakfast. I left to work while giving my best act of everything is fine. On my way to work, I called my boss and told her I had some important stuff to do and I'd come in later. I also told her that if anyone calls asking for me, tell them I'm working but I'm busy. She understood in my voice that something was seriously wrong and ended it with, please stay safe. I drove to the police station and parked behind it in an alleyway away from the eyes of the crowd. Even though I knew that he was in a wheelchair, I couldn't shake the feeling that he was going to follow me. I didn't know how, but I just had this gut feeling, you know? Like, ugh. anyway, I entered the station and I looked around. I couldn't see the officer that I'd talked to last time. So I, I asked at the desk, Can I help you, ma'am? Huh, yes, I was looking for Officer Atkins. Oh, Oliver Atkins? Yeah, sure, wait here, ma'am. Atkins! The man I had previously talked to approached with a smile. I sighed in relief. Hey there, Mrs. Smith, what can I do for you? Hello, officer. I, I need your help. Can we talk somewhere more private? Officer Atkins looked at me with a serious face as his everlasting smile faded away. Come with me. I followed him to a small room in the back. It was something between a meeting room and an interrogation room. It only had a desk and two chairs, one on each side. No windows, but a very normal door which didn't strike me as an entrance of a place they'd put criminals in. He motioned me to sit and I sat in front of him. So, Mrs Smith, you're safe here. What can I help you with? This might be hard to believe, but trust me, I have been trying to wrap my head around it for some days too. Is this about the man who lives with you? I froze in place. I wasn't expecting that. Well, yeah. He looked at me and sighed. Ma'am, I won't lie to you, and don't take this as a judgement, but when I saw that man at your house right after Jim died, I had a weird feeling. You didn't strike me as someone who would move on that fast. And you were devastated at the funeral. And then, not even a week later, you gave up your daughter for adoption and this guy moves in. Adoption? I'm not sure what my face looked like, but he looked frightened. He yes, ma'am. Don't you remember? I realised I was now up and stiff as a log. I looked around in confusion and then succumbed back into my chair. I don't, I don't remember anything. I, I, I beg it. At this point, I was sobbing. Atkins got up to try and comfort me, but I think, I think he's been drugging me. I thought he was Jim. Atkins stopped comforting me out of shock. Wait, what? Jim is dead. How could it be Jim? What led you to think that? I took a few deep breaths, trying to compose myself, and when I could finally talk, I explained everything I explained to you guys so far. The breakfast, the death certificate, what I remember, and what I apparently don't. Everything. He sat on his chair, trying to process what I'd just told him. 
Can I call you Alison? Of course. Alison, that's a lot, and I don't think I can help you with that as an officer. The obvious procedure here would be to take you to be evaluated by a psychiatrist, and you would likely be sent to a unit for treatment. Oh my God, please, no, don't. I pleaded. Of course not. Call me crazy, but I believe you. Hell, this could cost me my job, but I do, and I think you're in danger. Did it occur to you that this man might be Jim's killer? I mean, that would explain why we can't find him. I told him the truth, that yeah, it did. It would make perfect sense. Being at home all the time, being nobody aware of his identity. According to Atkins, they did look into him as a suspect, but he's had a pretty strong alibi. Apparently he was at the hospital. Okay, Alison, here's what we're going to do. Go home after work. I'll go there later today about an anonymous tip. Act surprised. I'll try my best to see if he lets me check the house out. Then we'll see how it plays out. I agreed, thinking to myself, it was a bit of a shabby plan, but still, it was the best I had. As I was leaving, I heard Atkins suddenly yell, Alison, get down! Across the door came a bullet. I looked ahead to see where it came from, to see the imposter standing there, fully capable, without his wheelchair and his gun pointing at me.